Hi, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us today. And today I'm going to uh, introduce you Steph, uh, Stephen Christian. He is our speaker today. And uh, the topic is uh, exploring SR through art, culture, and education. So yeah, let's welcome Stephen uh, Christian. And uh, I will pass my baton to you. Yeah. Awesome, awesome. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Uh, hope everyone is doing great. Uh, I am, my name is Stephen Christian, uh, and I'll get a little bit into my, uh, my presentation in a moment. Uh, if there are any technical difficulties, I apologize. Um, I am currently in the middle of moving. I, uh, I just bought my first house, and so I'm like super excited about that. Uh, new homeowner, yeah. And so, uh, you know, it, it's, uh, you know, I think it's, you know, it's it's definitely an experience that uh, you know I'm I'm glad to sort of embark on, and I think it speaks to, um, you know, sort of the the opportunities or the benefits of opportunities that are coming to, uh, you know, creators that are in the space like me that, uh, you know, in the past have not necessarily found a a pathway for success. Uh, because normally you see these things in terms of, uh, you see the success in terms of like business to business solutions. Um, and I'll dive a little bit deeper into like what my work does, but like you'll quickly see that like, it is definitely a non-traditional approach using uh, the technology that we see here. And so I am going to share my screen uh, and hopefully it shares with all the sound and, and all the great stuff that, uh, that um, uh, is needed. And boom, uh, can everyone see the uh, title screen? Uh, is everybody able to see that? Yes. yes. Yeah, I can see it. Awesome, awesome. Uh, so uh, hopefully the sound works, fingers crossed. But uh, okay, so um, my name is Steven Christian. I am a, uh, you know, an XR creator. I am also a medical student at the University of Nevada, Reno. And I uh, own a, a small creative studio called Iltopia Studios. Today, I will be talking about exploring XR uh, through art, culture, and education. Um, and XR is a, you know, sort of an acronym for, sort of, I would say it's like an acronym like the metaverse, right? It was like, what does it actually mean? Um, XR is uh, the combination of um, augmented reality, virtual reality, and sort of the, in, the, the hybrid of the two, which is a mixed reality. And, uh, and so when we talk about XR, I'm primarily talking about um, augmented reality and a little bit of mixed reality, not necessarily a virtual reality. Um, I have experience with it, but um, I think that most of my experiences and most of my uh, use cases are using augmented reality uh, for a very particular um, uh, for very particular reasons that I'll go through. Um, and so again, you know, um, uh, I do a lot of stuff in a, in a variety of different areas and uh, albeit not intentionally, but, uh, but just by happenstance and, and the opportunities that presented themselves, I, I've worked in uh, primarily entertainment and uh, in education. And so my background um, is, you know, 10 plus years in animation, also uh, probably 15 years in emerging tech uh, within mobile devices. And, um, and I'm currently in medical school. So I guess 10 years from now, I could say that, you know, I've been exploring the, the intersection of uh, technology and art and, and medicine, uh, you know, but right now, you know, sort of slowly getting into it, just finished my first year. So, you know, getting used to like, what the expectations of a, you know, of a, you know, a healthcare provider or a physician will, will look like. Uh, but again, on a side note, I, I do create content and I produce, um, uh, you know, animated shorts and experiences through uh, Iltopia Studios as well, uh, which I founded, I think, in like 2000, uh, 2016. And so uh, prior to that, you know, I've, I've held a lot of different titles. Um, I played football at the University of Hawaii in Oregon State. So I was sort of like a traditional like student athlete and um, after injuries, I uh, started to explore other areas um, while I was still in college. And, uh, and that, you know, ranged from, you know, again, animation, 
uh, teaching, uh, doing stuff in the community, creating comics, um, you know, going through entrepreneurship stuff. Um, uh, along the way, I became a Unity certified instructor and, you know, became a Unity certified 3D artist. Uh, I do a lot of stuff with their, uh, the Unity Learn platform at the moment. Uh, I, you know, wrapped up some of the stuff with, uh, with their animation track and their creative core track, as well as their um their their new uh, xr tracks that they, that they will be releasing soon um and aside from that you know just true millennial stuff you know uh, like skateboarding and podcasting and stuff like that uh but my uh my previous title was a full stack augmented reality developer for mobile devices and so uh um that was that used to be a that used to be a, a tongue twister to sort of say and now i just say i'm an xr creator which is also easier to say and so my work, it focuses on the intersections of art, technology, and culture. And I should have like capitalized and like underscored like culture because uh, to me, culture is the, the why, you know, the culture is, the, culture is the, the reason why you would use technology and use art to, uh, to create or explore ideas. And, uh, and for me, that, that why is to explore theme, uh, themes that uh, are related to Black experiences in America. You know, we, we've seen sort of an influx of, of interest, I would say, in like hard quotes um, about, you know, what the Black experience is and, and what it looks like. Um, you know, not to sort of like repeat the, the constant cliche of, you know, Black experiences aren't a monolith, but like it, it's, you know, really just exploring and putting out there what, what speaks to the experiences of, uh, of Black people in America and, and how we can learn from those things, how we can relate to those things on a deeper level, and how we can communicate uh, the experiences so that it provides opportunities for other people and changes the fabric of the landscape for the better. And so those themes, you know, they range from social justice to uh, overcoming adversity, uh, finding a sense of belonging, love and acceptance, uh, interpersonal relationships, effects of pop culture, developing an identity, uh, and mental health, you know, and so, you know, in a nutshell, like, the, the themes that I explore are themes about the human experience. And uh, through technology, I'm able to uh, show the human experience through the lens of, uh, of, you know, a Black perspective. And, uh, and the reason I'm able to do that is because the core component of XR is an immersive experience, you know, and the immersive experience is what attracts people to it. The immersive experience is what um, makes it more engaging. The immersive experience is why people pay so much for these things. Uh, the immersive experience is also why we're interested in developing in that. And so when you have that technology, your, your, your biggest problem isn't how do, I, how do I do this? It's what do I do with this? And, uh, and that, that is often the core focus. And, and to me, that is the driving force behind um, the, the cultural aspects and the, the cultural effects of the use of technology that leads to a success, right? Uh oh, oh no. Uh, I, I think there's a question from Mark. Uh, Mark, do you want to unmute yourself? Yeah, I, I know there's a, yeah. Yeah, the uh, okay. So uh, could you please expand on that point? Uh, what art, what art, what are the opportunities or what art the Sorry, opportunities? Uh, yes, <laughs> um, I'm, I'm based in, in the UK, London. Um, Thank you very much. Um, um, I, yeah, it was really about what um, what are the potential opportunities for creators of color in the ever expanding diverse space of otherwise called XR. We've seen examples of how artists, creators of color have innovated, whether it's to music from the margins 
to the mainstream, whether it's hip hop and other areas. But what interests me specifically is that there is a clear barrier to access, both in terms of cost of entry to XR, yet the tools themselves and access to audiences have actually been, uh, if anything, become more accessible. So is there an opportunity between that disconnect? And if so, what in your opinion are they? Yeah, um, I would say that I have a, uh, I can't speak for every opportunity, but I could, I could speak from what my experience has been. And I'll give you an, I'll give you a, a perfect example of, of like what my experience would look like in the, uh, to answer your question. And so um, I, uh, I got into XR for one particular reason. And I wanted to find a way to incorporate uh, an the animated stuff that I would put on YouTube into the comic books that I made that I sold at conventions when I was doing conventions. Because I, uh, I, I make graphic novels. And so I make comic books and stuff and I, I print them and I sell them. Uh, and when I tell people that I'm an animator, they only, uh, if I don't have a link to show them, then, you know, it's, it's just sort of, you know, word of mouth at that point. And so I want people to, uh, I wanted people to see my animations more easily. And so I was introduced to uh, augmented reality uh, uh, through a, an augmented comic book. And so when I saw that, I was like, oh, snap. In, instead of me having to sh give people a link, I can infuse the animations that I create into my comic book seamlessly. And so when they buy my comic books, they also buy my animation. And then when I show people the demos and stuff, all they have to do is just download the app. And so it, it, it created this sort of this pathway for me to explore. And as I started to pursue that pathway and just literally just share it and be transparent about my development process, people started to see it and they were like, oh snap, this is crazy. I like what you're doing. You know, I wanna do that. I want to be able to create in that way. And I started to develop a, a workflow and a look and feel to how I incorporated XR into it to where it, it became a unique thing because I was approaching it the way I wanted to approach it uh, without having to fit some sort of mold. Because like you said, you know, um, for us as creators of color, we aren't included in this, right? And so we are in and, in and of themselves, like we are pariahs in the, in the space that has opportunities for us, uh, but they're not going to explicitly say that those opportunities are for us because we have to figure it out. I found out that my niche is being able to take the core components of XR and make them more accessible so that anybody that has a, a mobile device that can support AR kit and AR core can have an experience that's comparable to somebody that has a HoloLens. And by exploring that and, and seeing that nobody else was exploring it because they wanted to sort of fit that mold, um, it allowed for me to take advantage of opportunities because uh, one, I had the technical skills, two, I had the body of work that people saw via videos on YouTube and stuff, and three, uh, I was just persistent. You know, I, I was persistent in creating, developing, and sharing every single day until, until you know, somebody asked me to speak on a, on a panel. Then I applied for a grant. I got that. And, and then it just became this sort of domino effect that, uh, that, that continued to uh, benefit me in the long run as I continued to do the things that I, that I was doing. And so uh, short answer, you have to figure out what makes your reason for exploring XR unique because just trying to make an Ikea clone and trying to, you know, just do face filters is not going to get you like everybody's doing that. But um, if you're trying, if you want to explore the ideas and explore the things that you're passionate about with the technology uh, that nobody else is doing, uh, then it's just a matter of time and persistence and, uh, and the amount of time and the uh, amount of dedication that you do to not only developing, but also sharing will, uh, will benefit you in the long run. 
whether that's tomorrow or whether that's next year or whether that's in five years, that's to be determined. Um, it worked out for me because I guess the, because of the timing and because of the work that I was doing. Uh, and it, it would be different. I would say if I were to approach this now, it would, I would not have gotten this far in sh such a short amount of time. Uh, if I were if we were to do it in 2022 opposed to 2019, and so uh, and so yeah yeah so hopefully that that answers your question. Um, this is I'm like really passionate about this because uh, because I lived it you know like I, I lived uh, you know some of the things that you talked about and um, and I and I always go back to all the videos that I, that I posted about my frustrations in it and uh, and all those things that. Uh, that really draw, drove me to, uh, to really try to push myself in and make myself uh, stand out. And so, uh, so hopefully I answered your question and uh, yes. Okay, cool, awesome. And so uh, uh, I'll get back to my uh, presentation. So um, wait, where's that? Okay, so theme. So, uh, so one of the things that I, uh, you know, as an educator, as a, uh, a black creator, as somebody that, um, you know, as a as a, a black medical student, um, one of the things that I was forced to reckon with or have reckoned with and, and acknowledged for a while is that, you know, technology has has played a part in, um, you know, si perpetuating systems of oppression. And when we're talking about XR, you can't deny the fact that uh, XR is, you know, sort of a, a variation of that that technology. Uh, it's emerging tech. It, it's uh, it's it's innovation. It's it's things that are supposed to make our lives easier, um, but uh, it has been used uh, with bad intentions, and uh, and and we see the effects of that, and we see these systems that that came out about that, right? And you know, at, at some point, you know, I had to really explore and reckon with the that intersection. And whether this was a a good thing to uh, a good intersection to pursue, and I and I mean uh, technology and culture, uh, particularly with Black culture, because uh, there have been count countless examples of uh, you know technology and uh, people behind the technology taking advantage of the culture and not benefiting or or, or adding to the culture, and so you you sort of siphon out the things that are great. Uh, and then you leave the people and you leave the history behind uh, for monetary gain, X, Y, and Z. And so I, I um, you know, through that exploration, I, I, I came, I didn't come to the conclusion, but I just acknowledged that uh, technology in and of itself isn't an evil thing. You know, it doesn't have intentions. It's indiscriminate. It just, it is, it's just, it just exists. Um, but the, the direction of the technology uh, results in those, you know, the, those intentions and those those systems that uh, lead to oppress. And and that was an interesting uh, level of exploration that that yielded some interesting ideas and thoughts that uh, that really drive me to this day. Uh, not only as a technologist, but also just as a medical student or a creator. And and the reason is because, like you know, during the pandemic, we saw the benefits of technology. You know, we saw that when everything shut down, the internet turned on. And, you know, we had Zoom meetings where we could see our friends every day to where I was tired of like talking to people, even if I didn't leave my house because I was connected, you know, and technology allowed that to happen. Um, you know, I was able to learn Blender. I was able to, you know, get better at Unity. I was able to do all that stuff because technology made it available to, you know, do on-demand classes. I was able to watch, you know, a Marvel movie in my living room when that mess came out because uh, technology was available. Um, you know, I, I, and more importantly for like game developers and anybody that like uses a game engine, which everybody pretty much does at this point in XR, uh, you're able to develop games and build apps that, you know, you could put on an app store and, create a whole career for yourself uh, just with your computer, right? Like you don't need a whole team. You could just do all this stuff just with an idea. And so like technology uh, isn't evil, 
it, you know, it's a, it's an, it's an equator, You're, you know, it allows for you to, you know, sort of be equitable in certain experiences. And so it lowers the bar barrier of entry um, because of that. And the thing about it is that, you know, technology uh, can be great or it could be worse depending on how it's used. And so, uh, and so some, some sort of examples or references that I have uh, uh, are these little videos here. And I think these really just sort of like speak to, uh, you know, how technology can be used within the context of culture to, to relay messages. Um, and so I'll just play these two videos here. And so, you know, I mentioned that I'm a, I create graphic novels and I create work in a, in a variety of areas. Um, this is my, you know, pre-pandemic, pre-medical school. This was sort of like my, my big passion project, my day job. And so I, I made books. I, uh, you know, did art festivals and, and did conventions and really tried to create work that allowed me to go out into the world and, and share and connect with people. Uh, and it, you know, it's there. So there was always this, this tangible element to my work and that tangible element, uh, really spoke to what my interests were and also what, uh, you know, like ways it spoke to ways that I can connect with people. And by connecting with people, I was able to, uh, participate in those cultural elements because, us as people where when we have interactions, we bring the culture that that comes with us uh, into those interactions. And so it, it yielded a lot of different things that in many ways really, really helped my development process. Uh, as I was trying to figure out what to do and how to do it, I would interact with people that uh, in some ways would give me ideas. Uh, they probably didn't know anything about the technology, but they would give me ideas when they when they would see the benefit, the uh, the the efforts that I put into, uh, you know, presenting the work that I was doing, and and it evolved over time, which was really really interesting. And so through that uh, through that exploration, I um, just developed a body of work that that spanned a lot of different things. And so uh, here's a, a demo of it. And so what you saw there was a combination of, you know, the exploration and in, in some ways the, the innovations that I've uh, pursued and, uh, and explored uh, over the past, you know, like X amount of years. 
And the core concept was really trying to figure out how to combine art and technology to create entertaining and educational experiences. And that, that sort of mission uh, comes across in a variety of different ways. Um, and that mission and, and just the, the ability to, to navigate art and technology um, yields you results that are very subjective. If I uh, was not, you know, if I didn't play football, if I uh, wasn't from the Bay Area, if I, uh, you know, didn't have these experiences, the work that you saw would probably look different. Uh, it may be using the same technology or maybe using a different, uh, you know, different mediums, uh, but it, it, it would look different. It would feel different. It would, it would say different things. Uh, and, I'll, and I'll, you know, sort of, I'm sort of prefacing this uh, for uh, the introduction of what uh, culture is and how, you know, you sort of explore uh, culture through t technology, but it, it speaks to the person and, and the intentions of the person. Uh, and the intentions of the person using the technology for a particular angle. And so before I dive into like, you know, what is culture and all that stuff, um, I want to just sort of explore like immersive experiences in and of themselves, uh, because I think this concept is really, really crucial to, uh, to understanding what you can do with XR. Um, and, and often the conversations around XR, whether you uh, have been familiar with it or whether you know it by proxy or you are exploring it yourself, is what do you do with the technology? How can it be used? Like, what is it? Um, and I think the, the core concepts of, an, of understanding an immersive experience really lead you down a, a beneficial path because it narrows the focus of, you know, what it is to how it how it comes to be and how we experience it. Because if you take people out of out, if you take the the developers and the um, you know users away from the uh, technology, then the technology is worthless. There is no value in it if it doesn't benefit people in some way, shape, or form. And so, uh, an immersive experience. Uh, if we were to call it XR, an immersive experience is uh, something that really appeals to, uh, you know, to people. And so I, you know, just a quick definition is that an immersive experience is an illusion that, that makes you feel like you are inside or part of an environment. Uh, and so we perceive that environment as tangible or real, but in reality, it's not real. It's, it's intangible. It's made up. Um, but when we're in that experience, it feels real. So therefore it is real. When you, uh, when you leave that experience, you have a, you have a, a visceral memory, uh, that is associated with it. You know, you, uh, in virtual reality, if we're to use virtual reality as a, um, as an example, in virtual reality, if you walk down the street and you jump off a ledge, when you take off that experience, you still walk down the street and jumped off that ledge. You, you felt it, you, you, you know it existed because you did it. And nobody could tell you otherwise because you had that experience. It's subjective, yes, but that subjectivity doesn't mean that it, uh, it changes the fact that you had that experience. And so when I talk about like immersion and immersive experiences or, or immersive experiences, um, it's, it's based off of this concept of immersion and, uh, a, a great way to think about it is, you know, you going into, a, a, you know, 60 foot, uh, ocean or just like a vast, uh, sea and you look up, down, you look around you, uh, you're covered in water, you're, you're immersed in water. Uh, you can feel it on your skin. You, uh, it affects the way you breathe. You can feel the pressure. Uh, everything about it is like you are uh, within something that um, that covers every area, every aspect of your senses. And uh, with immersion, uh, we we talk about uh, the experience 
as it relates to our senses, uh, whether it's touch or sight or smell or taste or hearing, um, you know, anything that impacts the senses um, contributes to that experience. And uh, often the defining characteristics of an experience is actually how it affects those senses. If you're talking about reading a book, you know, you know that you're incorporating your eyes, you know that you're incorporating touch to feel the book or feel a tablet or whatever. And so that, that immersive experience of reading uh, involves two senses. And so therefore, that's the, that's, the, e, that's the depth of the immersive experience. When you, want to, uh, when you want to sort of like make it more immersive or less immersive, you wanna, you're essentially looking at it on a spectrum. And, uh, and I say looking at it on a spectrum, whether than uh, saying like it's immersive or not, is that in order for something to be, uh, to not be immersive, you essentially have to have a sensory deficit. Uh, you have to literally not be able to hear anything. You have to literally not be able to see anything. You have to literally not be able to touch, smell, taste anything in order for you to not have an immersive experience. And so by proxy, everything that we have is an immersive, is an immersive experience. This, you know, this presentation is an immersive experience because it's incorporating your, your sight. It's incorporating your, uh, your hearing. If you're holding a mouse or if you're holding your tablet, it's incorporating touch. And, uh, and, and that speaks to uh, what, like how we perceive things and how we experience things, you know, because we don't experience things in a vacuum. And so when you want to make something more immersive, you're essentially adding more senses to the experience. If you want to make something less immersive, you're removing senses from the experience. And, and, and that means that pretty much everything is immersive because you can't remove every single sense from an experience because that would not be existing at this point, right? You know, it's, it's, uh, it, it just goes against like what we know to be true uh, about the way we go about our lives. And so, you know, uh, immersion, it appeals to our senses. And so therefore, an immersive experience is an experience that, that, that appeals to the senses of, of the user. And those core components uh, of an immersive experience, um, you know, it's not rocket science. There's actual like things that you can do and check off a list to create that experience and understand that, you know, it, it's, it's, it can be pretty formulaic. And so, you know, when we're talking about making immersive experiences, uh, particularly for AR, VR, or MR, um, you're talking about having a rendering engine, something that renders things in real time so that you can have interactions, you could have feedback. You're talking about 2D and 3D content because everything is digital. And so you just have to have stuff that people can see and people can respond to. Uh, you have materials and textures, which just sort of, they're themes that, that color the world and color all the polygons and pictures that make it interesting. You have um, audio and audio is also, it's often just a big component because without audio, you can't engage the ears. Yet audio is something that can make or break your, your, visual, your visual experience uh, because uh, you know, your eyes and your ears are just connected in, in, the, world, in the ways that, um, that we just know to be true. If something sounds great, uh, it, it feels great. And, and it makes sense to you. If you're walking down the street, you'll hear, you'll hear footsteps. And, and that makes the experience uh, more believable because you know, when, when you take a step, it makes sense. Um, you prefer questions during or after your presentation? Uh, I mean, yeah, you could, uh, actually, we will, have, uh, we will have time for, uh, for questions at the end. Uh, and so, uh, and we'll, yeah, we'll have plenty of time. And so hold on to the questions and, uh, and we'll be able to, I'll be able to address those, uh, in the, in the time that we have. Um, but, uh, yeah, yeah. You know, like animation, it, it brings, you know, static worlds to life and, uh, you know, it really allows for us to, um, really perceive the, the experience as, as something that is uh, in addition to the lives that we that we live on a regular basis. Um, obviously, lighting is for visibility and for influencing the moods that we have. Uh, and then, you know, last but not least, software development. 
you know, code is an integral part, even if you're not writing the code yourself, the, the back end is sort of the driving force or the back end is the backbone of our uh, of the experiences that we create. And so you may not be a developer, but you but the experiences that we have, uh, you know, the core foundation is a built one elements of software development. And so I get to culture, which is, you know, the, the, the core concept of one, you know, what drives me, but also what makes things, what makes technology appealing. Um, I, I think about TikTok a, a, as an example, where TikTok is just a, uh, TikTok is just the, the 20, you know, the 2020 version of Vine. It's, it's no different than what we've seen before, but the, the reason people care about it is because of the influence that it's had uh, on a cultural level and uh, during a time that, that really meant a lot to people. And people utilize it uh, for a variety of ways because, because of what it can do for people. You know, it's the benefits of the technology, not, not that it's TikTok, because it could be anything else and it is other things. Uh, but, you know, it, it, it allows for us to, to, to do and, and do see and, and create things that, um, you know, allow us to contribute to uh, the lives of each other. And so uh, culture is just, you know, the customs, art, uh, social institutions, it's the history and it's the manifestation of human uh, uh, intellectual achievement of a collective. It is the, you know, the byproduct of, of efforts of people within a community to, uh, to relate to each other, uh, to share experiences, to communicate, and to, uh, and to motivate, to, to be better, to, um, you know, create a legacy. And, and we experience these things through, um, we experience culture through uh, traveling, through reading, through music, through dancing, through art, through food. And so, you know, we, uh, we have an idea of what culture is, even if we don't acknowledge it as culture, it's, uh, it's pretty much a way of life. It, it's, it's our lives. It's, uh, it's the lives that we choose, it's the lives that we know. It's the, the, the lens that we, uh, we make decisions based off of. And so when we're, when we're talking about the intersection, it, it's, it can be difficult because, you know, we often think that culture is devoid of technology. It's a, it's a, a more primitive way of living that we have to leave behind when we go to work, when we turn on our computer, when we uh, do anything that's quote unquote innovative, uh, culture, uh, you know, culture has to take a back seat. And argue that that's not necessarily true uh, because when we look at the things that, the innovations, there's a cultural element that, that makes that think innovative. And when you sort of ex accept it and acknowledge it and, and, and take it with you on your journey, uh, you tend to have interesting and like very interesting results. And, uh, and one of the things that I've sort of taken with me along this journey is this concept of, of Afrofuturism. And Afrofuturism is this idea that, uh, you know, was, was coined in the, in the early 90s. And it's, it focuses on reimagining a more equitable future for marginalized populations of the As African diaspora. And it really just, it, the, the core concept is, is uh, it forces you to ask one question and just one question at all. And that is just using uh, a what if statement to, uh, yeah, using a what if statement to reimagine an alternative reality. And, and challenge uh, preconceived notions that uh, we all think to be true, but but don't actually have the data to back up. Uh, somebody mentioned Octavia Butler and uh, and Sam Delaney and uh, perfect examples. Uh, it, it's it's really saying you know, 
in this situation with within this context, what if this happened instead of this? What if this, what if you just explored this? It could be anything and everything in the context of XR. It's like, what if you explored uh, cultural dances or, uh, you know, food from a particular period uh, with augmented reality or with virtual reality? What if you walk down the street with the historical figure in, uh, in your living room? What would, that, what would that experience be like? And then you, you, have a driving, you have a driver that allows for you to uh, explore the technology, utilize the technology, develop skills with that technology to bring about that reality and then document and, um, and examine it. And, and so in many ways, it, it's, it's, the, it's the sort of the excuse that you can give yourself to unchain your mind from what you think to know to be true and, and really uh, explore in a wholesome way because you're trying to answer a question that, uh, that leads to a particular answer. And you don't know what that answer is until you go through that exploration. In you know the world of medicine, it's in hypothesis, and the hypothesis, uh, uh, you know, yields a a reason for you to do research, and that research comes with um, comes with expertise and comes with the experience that you're able to share with the, the broader community, and so in many ways the 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 how to explore is really the scientific the scientific method. And that exploration is, in some ways, just um, exploring the innovations of the imagination. Because the world that we live in is just, it's made up. Like it, it, the things that we know to, to be true are things that, that people made up and, and pursued. You know, we know the theory of relativity because somebody spent some time just thinking about just a phenomenon and then they just made up concepts that uh that spoke to the realities of various experiences you know and they made up terms that that define those experiences you know in a in an alternate reality a dog could literally mean gravity and that's just because it's all relative and we, we respect it because uh, of that exploration, of that time, of that, of that, uh, that journey that yielded some result that, that started from a hypothesis. They literally just said, what if, and then they pursued that what if till they knew the answer to that what if. And so I, I sort of put uh, different sort of historical black figures in here to just sort of say, it, it, it doesn't matter what, uh, what area is, um, is being explored because each one of these areas, whether it's music, whether it's fashion, whether it's, um, you know, technology, whether it's, uh, it's augmented reality, uh, it, they are all valuable and they are all, uh, relevant to the, the technology that can be used in these spaces. And uh, uh, like an easy way to think about it is, you know, regardless of what industry you work in, if, it, if you have, if there's a business, you need an accountant. And so the accountant can be devoid of artistic prowess, uh, can be devoid of all those technical skills that are required to participate in the industry. But at the end of the day, you got to get bills paid and you have to, uh, and you have to have P&Ls. And so you need an accountant. Uh, and that's independent of any business that, uh, or any industry that, that exists. And, you know, in many ways, like this is culture, like that's what culture is. It's, uh, it's the, the manifestation of, of innovation. It's the uh, benefits of that exploration. It's the sharing of your findings uh, to inspire people. Uh, it's a way that we, we connect uh, the, the ideas that we have and the technology that we use with people. Uh, and, and, and not only that, but we're also meeting them where they're at and we're, commuting to, we're communicating to them in a mode that they choose to communicate in. 
And so in, in some ways, culture is the innovation of, uh, of you know, human existence and the human collective. And so I'll get to a story time because, uh, you know, I, I like to tell stories. And so, um, you know, during medical school, I was just trying to figure out um, ways to not be stressed out as much because medical school is pretty stressful. And, uh, and so I was just like, okay, I'm gonna just do what a, you know, normal millennials do, just go on TikTok and, and try to see what I can find. And so I ended up uh, just stumbling onto something on TikTok, me stuff, and I was just going down a rabbit hole with her. And so then I ended up running into this thing, which is like a Paramore song that is sort of like this drill trap, you know, remix or whatever. And, you know, I just started seeing people just making little dances to it and stuff like that. And so for me, I was like, boom, what if I do that in freaking animation and AR? And so I just decided to do that, right? And so uh, I ended up going on, checking out. So this, you just that. And so, uh, and so I just found a dance, found a little trend on TikTok, and uh, and was just like, huh, you know, that looks cool. I I kind of want to do something. And so I just asked myself, you know, what if I just created this in the in the with the medium that I like to engage in? Um, and through that exploration, like you didn't see anything outside of just people just dancing on a camera. And so I was like, what if I just add my little twist to it and, uh, and see what is possible. And so I, as a creator, um, I have a Rococo motion capture suit, which is great. I love it. Um, and it allows for me to do and do interesting experiences with. And, uh, and so, you know, my, my creation doesn't just, you know, uh, you know, it doesn't end at a computer. I can actually put on technology to transfer my movements to the experiences that that I have. And so, uh, and so here's sort of a um, here's a here's a little bit of just like me just sort of exploring and just doing that. Whoops. I'll go back. So then you just read that. And so it's just me just having fun, right? Like it's, you know, no shame, just doing what I would normally do with my friends, uh, except for, you know, it's during the pandemic. So I get to just sort of like do it in my room and just record it. And so as I, as I created, I, I started to look and I started to have references and I started to pull from references from, from people that were participating in that experience. And so uh, I just sort of stumbled on one like this. And so it's just pure wholesome expression uh, contributing to the culture, right? You know, and that's what these trends are. It's just sort of, you know, prompts to en engage in cultural experiences. And, uh, and so from there, I was just like, okay, what if I just, you know, take some time and, and, and take that idea, take what I did and, and try to combine it in a way that's really interesting. And so, uh, you know, in true millennial fashion as well, uh, I grew up in the Pokemon era. And so, um, you know, I just sort of have, uh, ideas that I want to create with my favorite characters and, and my favorite, um, build these experiences that I know just wouldn't exist if I, uh, didn't pursue them. And so I just sort of uh, created something. I had this like anime trap project that I was working on with the with the Attack on Titan. Then I was just like, why don't I just like remix it and just build off of it? And so that's the beauty of having uh, Unity is just you're able to just like iterate on these things really, really fast, right? It's already had a template, already had ground plane tracking, already had all this stuff. And so all I did was just go ahead and swap out the characters or remove characters and build it after putting different animations in it. And it was just, I mean, it's just that simple right now. And so for all these different things, with all the courses that I've made, you know, it's really, really fast on these different ideas. And so it was just, you know, that was just sort of like a time lapse of me just like working. I'm just playing with the ideas. I have a whole bunch of different animated things that I recorded. I'm just putting them all together and just and seeing what I come up with. And so, uh, and so I ended up just making a, a little animated short 
that allowed me to uh, just sort of play the idea out. Um, and so this is what I came up with. And so it's like, you could see the references that, that I pulled from, and then you could see some additional elements that I just sort of included into it. And it, it, you know, my whole mission was to just create something that I wanted to see in the world that spoke to the experiences that I had, the interests that I had. And then hopefully it speaks to other people's things, right? That's, I think the, the core focus of us creating or participating in trends is not to just sort of be sheep, but to add our own little twist to it. Uh, and you can see that with the one of the references that I had where you had a break dancer, that somebody that knew how to do some cool stuff. And so they participated in it and then they added to it. And that addition to it is that inspiration that people pull from. Cause it's like, oh, wow, that person did that. What if I do that? What if I do this variation of it? And it, and it becomes this thing that uh, it's a competition, but it's a competition in a way that, uh, you know, how, like, how, how far can you push this idea that somebody came up with and how far can you push it to not only entertain people, but also uh, allow people to, um, you know, go beyond what you do. It's in some ways it's, it's creating a legacy. Uh, from ideas, from actions that people take. And so from there, you know, I, I said, okay, I, I, you know, did it in Unity. I, I made a little animated segment. So now what, what if I just like took it that step further, right? I took that step further, not by going beyond animation, but uh, actually putting that animation into my real world. And so that's what I did. And so I sort of put it all together and, and I created something, uh, created something completely new that referenced uh, all the old stuff. And so I like my favorite part about this is um, how organic it sort of turned out, because in reality, it's just an animated video that I sort of composited, but I didn't because I sort of just placed this in a context and just watched what happened. I did not anticipate this car driving by. And so when people look at it, it feels real because not only it speaks to the organic nature of how people create these TikToks and create these experiences. Because as you look at this video, it's, it essentially looks like there's these characters that, uh, that are doing, that are participating in the dance. And one of them almost gets hit by a car trying to participate in a, in a TikTok dance. And I didn't expect that to happen, you know, but the way, it, the way it ended up, you know, the way it turned out, this is it. And so it, it's like, you know, able to, you know, combine uh, shadows, real-time shadows with, you know, uh, with organic sort of elements that, uh, that literally happen in real life. And this is all done with technology and a phone. And, uh, and then you just sort of like pursue that idea. And then this is the, this is what you get. This is the experience. And so uh, I, I always like, I like, this is my favorite shot of it because this speaks to the power of uh, exploring through a cultural lens to look at that intersection. Because at the end of it, this is, you know, this is all zeros and ones and, and code and, and polygons and pixels. Uh, but, you know, the, the effect that comes from this is, is very powerful. And so some other experiences that I have that I, uh, that I sort of pursued are, uh, are these here. So I'll just sort of uh, play them as, a, as they sort of uh, go.
I got stacks to the right of me. I got my key to the left of me. Huh? Wait. And so this is also part of like a little TikTok trend that was going on where it was mixing, uh, you know, particular hip hop songs with like anime theme songs. And so people were just having fun with it. And uh, then it was just like, okay, how do you sort of reimagine that with the technology to create something and then place that into your real world? And so the interesting thing about this is that uh, this is a demo of being able to be a real-time camera person. And so when you have these uh, experiences that, uh, these social experiences, uh, one of the things that is uh, very power or really like key is who's your camera person? And so you have the scene and through AR, you could place the scene in, in your real world and then you can be the camera person to get the right camera angle to share with your friends. Say cheese! And obviously these are just simple use cases of, you know, just being able to have posters or murals and being able, uh, you know, outside of your room, outside of your bedroom, outside of your apartment, and uh, and being able to augment those and, and create experiences for people that just walk by. With my drip from the checks, save a couple hundred by your money with the rest. I prefer my reefer with Henny and Coke. Please don't be stingy, got plenty to smoke. Show up and act up and back to the crib. I do not stun, I just rap what I live. And then this is just, you know, having fun with just dancing and uh, converting motion capture to, uh, you know, 3D characters in a space that, you, that you're existing in. And so uh, with that, you have, this, uh, you have this opportunity, you have this, um, this privilege once you go down this exploration that um, really touches on like a, a core cultural concept. And that concept is uh, each one teach one. And uh, it resonates with me because uh, as a, a black person in America, there's, there's, a, there's a history behind this, this term. And so when uh, enslaved people were, uh, you know, they, they learned how to, when they learned how to read and when they learned how to write and they did things that were uh, deemed illegal, uh, you know, there were no institutions to support them uh, reading, writing, like benefiting themselves uh, socially. Uh, and so when they, when they gained these skills, it became a duty for those people that built those skills up to, uh, to teach others around them, teach their community. And so that it spawned this phrase, uh, each one teach one. And that resonates with me on, on so many levels because uh, I benefited from it. I, um, you know, that, that's how I was able to sort of pursue the things and that's what gave me the inspiration. But then it became this, uh, this honor to sort of go back to your community to share what you've learned. And so through the exploration that I did, you know, I was able to create project demos, step-by-step uh, -step guides, uh, time lapses, tutorials, uh, walkthroughs, courses, and those courses and everything allow for me to uh, take the stuff that like I didn't learn in school, I just learned by playing around with, and then, uh, and then uh, creating not necessarily curriculums, but conversations around that exploration. And those conversations are the things that we, that we pull from. And one of the things that I, uh, one of the things that, that really stuck out to me is just as I share, you know, when I said, okay, you know, just hit me up if you have any questions or whatever, uh, people respond back and, and quite often I would get the, I would get the, um, the responses, like a very particular response from, from people that, uh, from my community 
that, uh, that, that had technical skills, but they didn't know what to do with them. They didn't know how to, uh, you know, explore ideas that they had. And so, you know, one person re re reached out to me and was like, you know, just, you know, if you don't mind uh, me asking, uh, you know, not only how did you get started, but, uh, you know, just trying to have, uh, trying to find or having a hard time finding uh, ideas to come up with that, that are interesting and really things that like spoke to their interest and, and spoke to the things that they could relate to. Uh, and often because I'll, I'll go back to that, the, the example that I use where, you know, when we, when we advance in technology, we uh, tend to leave the culture behind and, uh, and by not leaving the culture behind and being able to explore ideas that speak to our, our cultural experiences, we are able to, uh, you know, come up with ideas that we can pursue uh, because the world is full of ideas. It's whether we give ourselves the, um, the opportunity to explore them. And so, you know, when I'm teaching sort of courses and stuff like that, it, it's, it becomes, it goes back to that formula of, you know, being able to utilize the core concepts of the, uh, what makes an immersive experience and then uh, dissect or find those intersections between the core components that make up the culture uh, and immersive experience and what the, the ways in which we experience culture and saying, you know, we experience culture in this way and this component, uh, this component of an immersive experience speaks to how we experience culture. And so you can explore uh, culture by exploring this component of an immersive experience. And by parsing it down to that, it gives you a direction on what to do. And it gives you a direction of how you can communicate with people on, on where to start. And so, uh, and so what that is really, is it's really sort of thinking outside the box, uh, but um, you know, the term used for it is an interdisciplinary approach. You are not necessarily using one discipline to, to explain another, and uh, you're essentially uh, taking the various disciplines that you have, the experiences that you have, and you are giving them equal weight and you're, you're allowing them to, to benefit the ideas and the projects and to develop uh, wholesome solutions. And so in, in many ways, yes, it's thinking outside the box. It's saying that, you know, I have interest in math, art, science. I, I love my friends. I love playing sports. I, uh, I'm very engaged with my family. I, uh, I have an education and I, you know, operate in business and by allowing these to exist without the confines that we normally put uh, these elements in, um, you know, you're able to apply skills. And, you know, this lends to market research and product development and community building. Uh, and really the big one is the community building because if people have the interest and people, you know, are inspired by what you're doing, then they'll continue to contribute to it. And just a couple examples uh, that I have again are just, you know, what if you're able to create an art piece where you could watch your favorite show with the, with the characters in the art piece. Um, another one, I, I was a big Yu-Gi-Oh fan. Um, and you know the the passing of the creator is definitely a just had, I mean it had a big impact on me over the past week and so uh, you know it's like what if you actually were able to bring to life your favorite card game uh, as if it was actually part of the show uh, and and so here's an example of that so I'll say summon monster like that and then the battle appears dark magician and battle. Dark magic attack, fire something, and then it goes to defensive mode. You know, and literally, like, being able to create something like that, that I could just, you know, sort of reminisce with my with my 10-year-old self is just, I just, you wouldn't even think it was possible until you pursued it. And then more importantly, being able to, uh, you know, contribute to the culture in, in ways that have social impact. Uh, by creating 30-foot monuments and, and all those different things without even having a permit.
say and then more importantly you know i mentioned that i do a lot of comics and stuff so it's like what does it look like to bring your comic to life hey watch this flex or the fun loving free spirit three two one let's go and then as a medical student you know it's like what does it look like to explore the human body uh, so that you could actually understand what's happening to uh, beyond just looking at pictures on it and words on a page? We'll start to integrate sound so that you start hearing these things. And there's a uh, voice input and guidance that allows you to do a variety of things. And so it's a, this is a project that, you know, I, I'm really by people like there's very little disparate populations, right? You know, where there's no black people in the AR space. There's no black people. And so uh, I'm going to do a little bit of a demo, uh, just something to uh, to show how things work in the in the space that I operate in. It's pretty quick, um, but uh, just a little demo, just to show uh, what what works and 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 how I navigate uh, an open canvas. And so as I am like working on the demo and stuff like that. Uh, uh, I would like to, I can open it up for questions for anybody that has uh, any questions about things. I particularly liked um, your videos and um, when you were showing uh, yourself in the motion capture suit, like in your living room, dancing around, <clears throat> I'm an engineer and an artist myself, in my case, uh, 3D photography. Ooh. And um, uh, in fact, let's see, look, if I turn this on, no, it doesn't show up, but, oh yeah, there's, there's some of my work right there. Oh, nice. So if you have red cyan glasses, that will appear in 3D. But anyways, nice. um, uh, what I was wondering is when you have your motion caption suit on and uh, your head popped up above the frame sometimes, and being an engineer, I just have to ask this question, what is your motion caption system do when parts of you pop out of the frame then you uh well you just have to know how to navigate the software and, and troubleshoot it so you it, have to go and fix it yourself yeah yeah you definitely have to go and fix it yourself i think i think the um because mind you we're talking about these tools that just like came out like yesterday right like we're huh. like these things are like they there's not a lot of research done in terms of one how effective they are in uh in uh making it more accessible but we do have they do a, a good job marketing uh yeah they do a good job marketing um you know the use cases and then yeah. you're essentially their product testers yeah and, uh and so you you do have um you do have a lot of bugs that you have to fix but i think that's where the technical skills in and of themselves sure. uh you know really play out to where it's like yeah i have this idea that that speaks to the cultural um, you know, speaks to sort of like my, my, my culture and my interests. And then I have the technical skills to mitigate some of the problems that would hinder those ideas from even existing. Right. And, uh, and, and that becomes the exploration right there, where sure. something super simple, like just sure. doing a dancing, the reason it doesn't exist is because it is kind of difficult to do. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. And I was wondering, I think, uh, I, I think Dom asked this earlier, but I missed the answer uh, about how much does that system cost? Uh, so this, uh, I want to say like three thousand for like the uh, for like the the hand tracking and like the body tracking. Uh -huh. and so uh, and which, for the most part, is like if you were to rent a like a a legit like motion capture system to like yeah. rent it costs like ten grand. Really? And so, uh, yeah, it's really expensive. And so, so to you're have better some, off buying it yourself. Well, yeah, yeah. Now that there's solutions that are available, um, I think the the second competitor to like Rococo is Xsense, and theirs is a uh, theirs is you know a little more expensive as well. I think it's like five grand or something like that. Mm -hmm. And uh, and yeah, so like 
just being able to just create some motion capture and just put on a suit just on an afternoon is uh is great you know yeah. it's it's great and um you know albeit it's not the cheapest thing but uh but you know i you know it's an investment and it's yeah, an investment sure. that uh that allows for you to pursue ideas that you otherwise would not be able to do pursue new opportunities yes. um and it, it was very cool the way you incorporated that into the like when you had that video with the three characters on screen and and you apparently did the dancing for each one of them yeah and incorporated it into that i like that oh yeah yeah it, it's uh you know i i, I think the uh, like i said before um you know the cultural elements are being able to be your authentic self uh and and show that in the work and using technology it it goes beyond just me recording on camera yeah. It, it allows for me to incorporate my my love for animation, my my skills in animation, uh, my interest in you know using particular characters, and also uh, my my ability to create uh, compositions and scenes that uh, that look that are believable uh, using technology. And I think those those things are um, they're just they're an extension of uh, who I am as a person and, and, and the culture that I sort of ascribe to it and I participate in sure. and, uh, and I just make a cool video and then you just post it and then people be like, oh yeah, that's cool. Yeah. Good work. <laughs> yes. Uh, and then I think, uh, Mark said, uh, if you were to meet your, uh, younger self five years into the future, uh, what advice would you give him in terms of navigating the immersive space and what core skill set? that he or she should be paying attention to. Um, the thing that I, I, I do a lot of reflective stuff because uh, uh, medical school requires you to do a lot of reflections. And so I just sort of developed that skill. Um, it didn't come to me naturally, but I developed that skill over the past X amount of years that, I, that, I, that uh, I've been pursuing this. But the what I would sort of like tell my... Uh, tell my, my, hmm. the first thing that I would, the first thing I would, I would tell myself is um, don't listen to anybody because they don't know anything. And that, that's sort of like a, you know, it's a, it's sort of like an angsty youth thing to say, but, uh, but in my experience, um, when I got into AR, uh, the biggest thing that people kept saying is that you know, uh, mobile applications are dead and, you know, AR glasses is the future and don't even waste your time doing like standalone AR things, look into web AR. Um, and, you know, image targets are not a core, they're not a, a core example of, of, of the innovations of technology, right? You know, people are trying to go away from print to, to have, digital overlays over everything. And, um, and my pursuit into finding seamless ways to integrate print media into, uh, to have these sort of larger than life immersive experiences is what got me here today. And so if I would have uh, continued to listen to sort of the, the evangelists of, of XR or whatever, um, I don't think I would have ever pursued the ideas that I did that people enjoy today uh, because it, it's not true. Like, it's not true that uh, mobile devices or, or mobile applications are a thing of the past. It's not true that, uh, you know, web AR and stuff is like the future. Like the future is just being able to have an experience with the technology. Once we get there, then we could talk about that stuff. But we're not even at that point where everybody, where creators can create an AR like in general, you know, it's still sort of a niche thing. And so, uh, and so until, uh, and what, like AR glasses, like they don't give you the, the same experience and, and people tell you that when, when they have them and you can't even get them. So it's like, what are we talking about? Um, and then the, the core skill set, honestly, I became a better animator when, um, I became a better animator when I got into AR. And so uh, for me, I would have told myself to get into 3D animation a lot earlier, because uh, if I would have, I think I would have, uh, I, I think I would have been able to create like 
cooler things uh, earlier on. Um, but yeah, like animation, like animation is definitely understanding how animation works, understanding how to how to work with within, within different softwares, uh, because uh, AR, XR, like immersive experiences that we have, it's all glorified animation. You take animation out of it, people don't care about it. And so, uh, and so I sort of learned that off of a whim, but uh, I was fortunate enough to have uh, experience in animation already, just not in 3D. Most of my stuff was in 2D. And so, um, yeah, enclosed in a, in a vacuum seems like going, uh, uh, wait, enclosed in a vacuum seems like going to be the, the norm. Uh, well, I could expand on that question. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah uh, you said it's not going to be in a vacuum earlier. Um, I kind of have to like, uh, like, respectfully disagree on that point, only because the biggest thing that um, XR has uh, has a problem with is spatial targeting, and I'm sure you know uh, plenty of that, and that's what yeah. pretty much got Pokemon Go as just a niche and not just a mainstream. Um, the reason why that and that's has been, been the biggest hurdle is that people can't get immersed enough, and also it's just a plain animation on top of your environment that you can't record the environment well enough. Um, that's why I'm seeing all these feet almost like theater kind of thing. Because if you're going to see an orchestra, you can't just hear it in on the street rather than seeing it in a theater is two blown uh, different experiences. So that's why there are still VR theaters, you know, doing watching plays or watching playing video games in there. Um, in the next 10, 10 or 15 years, XR still is not going to be at a level where we could be more interactive with our phones. Um, is enclosed environments where we could actually have we could take over all sensors, hearing, uh, hearing, touching, smelling, um, would be the actual norm until we have better technology? Um, so I, I think there's, uh, yes, like, there, like I agree with a lot of the stuff that you said in terms of the, uh, the capabilities, the potential and all that stuff. I'm a firm believer that AR is not meant to uh, replace the the physical experiences that we have in our in our day to day lives. What AR does and and it, what AR is meant to do, what XR is meant to do, is it's meant to make it more accessible and make it more fantastical. And so you can walk down the street. You will still walk down the street. You still have to walk down the street. That's not going to change. With XR, you can walk down the street and you could walk down the street with your favorite digital pet. You know, it, 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 it doesn't change the core component. It just enhances it, it layers on top of it. And, uh, and I would argue that if you have an experience that is supposed to replace a physical experience, that is, that is not gonna work. It doesn't work and it, and it shouldn't work because that is not what, that goes against uh, what the core concept of XR is. Um, and to, to the point of, uh, you know, it, it's sort of like not being in a vacuum and, and, and stuff like that. It, it's a, uh, it, I, I think that the, the power of um, AR and a lot of the work that I focus on is uh, how do you make it more accessible than it was before? Um, how do you make it uh, less cost prohibitive through mobile devices? Because the average person will have a device that's worth a thousand dollars at this point because Apple and Samsung do great at marketing and they have the sensors that are capable of doing these things that a thousand dollar headset would do. And so, uh, and so it becomes this uh, exploration that doesn't really, that isn't really defined yet, but it becomes this exploration of um, what is the potential now that we have the tools available. And so, uh, and so in, in short, like we don't know what it's going to look like in 10 years because they, you know, we thought that, you know, five, I would say three years ago, we thought that QR codes were dead until the pandemic hit. And now QR codes is the next best thing since sliced bread. And, but if you were to talk to somebody in early 2019, they'd be like, why do you have a QR code? Nobody uses those things, you know? And so, uh, and so the potential of the technology, uh, I say it isn't in a vacuum because, you know, we don't know what innovations may pop out. X, Y, and Z, you know, I, I think that, uh, 
you know, us sort of like being able to explore those ideas in wholesome ways uh, within the context of the world that we live in today, uh, you know, allows for us to, you know, come up with those answers in, you know. Maybe in a way, if I could best describe the next question, you know, in the turning of the mid uh, mid 2000s where the iPhone and apps were the reigning thing. Apple Apple products were the only ones that you actually utilize apps and yeah. people who transition with flip phones towards XR and uh, VR. Right now, VR needs to take the reins on actually introducing XR later on and until it's more affordable and more things could be used. It, we are going to be locked into enclosed environments for the next 10 to 15 years, wouldn't you say? Uh, I wouldn't say so because um, you could say the same thing about like gaming where mm -hmm. gaming used to be like an enclosed thing where you had to physically be in the same spaces uh, as uh, as other people in order to game. And now with the advent of, uh, of the internet and network, uh, just networking within game systems, uh, you're able to literally have communities where you don't play alone. And, mm -hmm. uh, and so as networking uh, within XR experiences become uh, more accessible for developers, uh, it becomes less buggy then you'll start to see um, these, ex you'll start to see more experiences that uh, speak to uh, the things that people want. And so, uh, and so I'm a firm believer that when you get uh, network-based XR experiences, uh, then, uh, and, and you start to see more of these cases of those, um, then you'll start to see more innovations and things that like you didn't even think were possible. Uh, and so I, I would just point to gaming as a, as a perfect one because I remember when I was in high school and Xbox was out and I wanted to play Halo with everybody and I had to literally go with my Xbox to my friends and we would do like the direct link cable and yeah. he, they would be in one room, we'd be in another room, we would have like a, a 50 foot link cable connecting our Xboxes and we would be playing like, you know, uh, capture the flag. You know, now I'll be, I'll be hard pressed to see somebody have that set up because you could just you could just do that on the internet because that's more accessible and that that changed within you know a span of what 15 years and so uh and so i'm i'm curious i'm curious to uh to see what that looks like gotcha yeah. i'm right now thinking that um vr needs to be king for a while before xr gets uh, gets a chance to you know, dethrone that. I mean, and one big example is: uh, Have you heard about the big VR dome they're making in in Las Vegas? Uh, I have. Um, I um, I don't know. Well, I would say like like comparing VR and AR, or talking about like dethroning and stuff like that. I I would akin that to like, you know, when people compare American football with like international football or soccer well then like, maybe, maybe the, if i could interject the best way not uh sorry not to dethrone there will always be there are two different mediums yeah. it just where we had movie theaters before people had television xr will be the television version of we could finally bring those kind of things into our own homes yeah we could do v, uh, vr in our own homes but it's only limited to what technology we could afford and space and all that but in the whole vr set up and actually place for industry we could go we could run in a vr building yeah i think uh when that it's it's super like hardware dependent and so uh and so i think that those questions will be made by corporations uh, yeah. you know those those answers will be made by corporations uh and so uh yeah but good questions i mean like you know hard it's like VR is very hardware dependent, all of it's hardware dependent. And so uh, in order to do that, it's, uh, it's, you just need the hardware. And when the hardware gets cheaper, then everybody can do more than just face filters. And so, uh, yeah, great questions. Um, I think uh, Mark has a question. Uh, this is another what if question. Uh, Black independent cinema was turned on its head when Spike we made uh, you got to have it for 160 or 176,000 uh, many years ago. If you were given five million investment to kickstart a revolution in XR uh, with diverse creators in two years, what would you do? I would actually, um, I would create a, 
I would create a low cost cardboard headset, very similar to, um, very similar to uh, Google Cardboard, but have like a form factor of like the Oculus and, um, and make it device agnostic and software agnostic and develop a, a software kit for, um, for uh, non-traditional creators to create uh, print media that can be augmented. And so essentially you have a, a workflow where anybody can buy a headset, costs like maybe 30 to 40 bucks. And you take your phone, which is probably gonna be the latest iPhone or, or Samsung phone. And you, uh, and you, you uh, allow for people to experience AR uh, or, or VR um, in the comfort of your home without having to pay this absorbent price. And, and then I would create those tools and make them open source. And, uh, and I would essentially have initiatives for, uh, for people to uh, create content within that system and see what people come up with. And, uh, and, and so by providing the tools and, and giving people the direction, um, you, uh, that's where true innovation comes and that's where the accessibility comes, where somebody can literally create a, create a book, create something that you could, you could buy in the store, pop, a, pop, you know, pop the headset in with you, pop the phone in your headset, put it on, and you literally would spend hours going through that book and looking at all the content, enjoying that that experience, and um, and what that would do is it would end up addressing a lot of a lot of different things. Uh, it would inspire people to see what the potential of the technology is, which would then encourage more people to get into the space and, and create in the space and innovate in the space. And then uh, and then also it would really change the landscape for how we would experience books. And uh, as a medical student, that's very powerful for me because in order to get into medical school, you have to have great reading comprehension. You have to have all these things to be successful. And so your incentive to explore ends up being the, the thing that helps benefit you the most. And so, uh, and so that's sort of like a mission I've been thinking about. You know, if I have $5 million, I would just do that mess right now. <laughs> um, uh, uh, <laughs> and, uh, and yeah, yeah, so I, I would definitely do that. Um, because it, it's we're at the point now where there aren't real cons business and consumer uh, use cases in AR or, or XR in general. People don't know how to make money in it. It's uh, it's essentially like people like companies pay for the stuff with their marketing budget, right? And so people don't buy the AR like people buy into the idea of what that experience gives them, and uh, and and so it. it but people are familiar with it and they understand, they understand that it exists. And so we're in, a, we're in an interesting time in the industry where, uh, where creators can literally throw up Unity and, and just create in the space and, and do all the things that they, they wanna do uh, at a low cost because the only thing that's holding them back now is really just having a computer, which post pandemic or during the pandemic, if you don't have a computer, you, know, you just didn't participate in the world. And, um, and, and really the ideas that you want to bring and, and, and the, the previous, you know, skill sets that you've had uh, in and of themselves. So, you know, we'll see how it goes. But uh, I think Jim has a, Jim has a question. Yeah, um, I, I think your $5 million project sounds like a good Kickstarter, then you don't have to start with the 5 million. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but oh, yeah. Um, anyways, I think something that's interesting to think about when you're looking towards the future is uh, look back at the iPhone. Before the iPhone, you know, who could have conceived of these things? Steve Jobs was famous for coming up with products that you needed before you know, knew that you needed them. And <clears throat> when he first came out with the iPhone, um, he was absolutely opposed to people running third-party software on it. In fact, if you tried to do that, they would brick your phone. Apple would brick your phone. Yes. And, and, and so then, you know, gradually thought, well, wait a second, I can take a third of the cut from the sales of these, these apps and create an app store. And then, then it was a great thing. And nowadays, who can even think about the iPhone without thinking about the apps that go on it? So I think the, the future is a very fluid place. Mm -hmm. And as soon as we think we know what's going to happen, everything can change us uh, under, underneath our feet overnight. Um, and I, there is a school of thought that says, you know, you should try to do things that are 
uh, platform agnostic. And there's tools out there right now for doing that. And uh, that sort of gives you a little bit of future proofing. Uh, and so um, I think it's perhaps not such a bad idea. Oh, yeah, yeah. I'm like, I am not a, I, if a, if a, if a software platform gives me the opportunity to do what I want to do with my ideas, I will use it. I am, I, I don't care. And I think that that loyalty to software and loyalty to a platform is really, I mean, it's just marketing. Yeah. You know, it's just the, the, the benefit of marketing. I will say uh, I was a, to date myself, I was a Windows mobile developer uh, mm -hmm. back when Windows mobile was a thing. And I left Windows, I left mobile development when Windows phone came out and sort of became defunct and, and Apple's opened up their developer platform because Apple's developer platform was so limiting back in 2010, 2000, like 2008. 2009, 2010, that I was like, I'd rather just learn how to animate than, than do this. And yeah. so, uh, and so it, uh, and now I'm sort of in the XR and if I want to be on an app store, I have to have an Apple device and develop for Apple. So, you know, jokes on me, you know, but, uh, but it, it's, uh, but it, it does evolve. It has changed. And, uh, and, you know, because people are constantly pushing the envelope, um, and exploring things and saying, hey, I don't need to do, I don't need to use your stuff to do what I need to do. Uh, it really forces companies and platforms to, to change for the people. And, uh, and I think that if we didn't have a culture that, that really, uh, that didn't care uh, about that, um, you know, it, I, don't, I don't think that we would be as far as we were at today. Um, well, and I think that if, even if you or I uh, set ourselves working in a, in a platform that is eventually going to be obsolete. They're all eventually going to be obsolete. Oh but yeah. That, Look in my space. <laughs> oh, sure. But that experience that we have of doing that, that work, uh, prepares us for future things. So it's, it's not a loss at all. Oh yeah. Yeah, for sure. For sure. I, um, I totally forgot that I said I was going to do a demo. And so I will actually do like a three minute demo because I work very, very fast. Uh, and so I will do that as I answer this, uh, this, uh, this next question here. Uh, yeah, this next question. So I'm going to share my screen. I am sharing uh, Unity because I work in Unity. Uh, and um, <laughs> I was like, oh man, man, I love these questions. And I was like, hey, I'm supposed to be doing something right now. <laughs> and so uh, here's a demo. I, I have a scene right here. I have the developer SK SDK like set up with it. So I'm going to uh, just remove this camera. Boom. I'm going to add a new camera because I like Euphoria. It's great um, because it's free. It's even greater now. Uh, I'm going to add a, uh, a image target because I, I made a little, um, I made a little, uh, mouse like mouse pad that I'm going to use. And so uh, I use that as an augmented uh, image target. And I'll just say, boom, got my image. Hopefully this works. I don't know if it will work, but if it does work, I'll be super happy. Uh, and then I'm going to boom, rotate this up because it's good to have a good perspective. And so I'll do negative 90. Uh, and so this is going to be the, the, the image that I have. Um, he said, talk powerfully about how learning animation was a game changer for you. Uh, aside from learning uh, to use Unity and Unreal to a brush, what other tools or apps would you recommend emerging? Um, I'm a big fan of just like combining 2D and 3D. So it's, it's really all about uh, what do you care about creating or what do you care about using or doing? And then, uh, and then with, that, uh, with that desire to create, um, Really, just have at it. Just, just do the things that you, uh, that you, that you want to do in the space. Um, and partly, I say that partly because um, people are always trying to figure out like, what is the, uh, what is sort of the the catch? Like, what is your, what is your niche? What is like, how can you like separate yourself from the rest of the world? And it's like, you know, there's so much stuff that if you just be authentic in, in something that you're familiar with and you incorporate some, some new skills into it, uh, it you, you get very, very far very quickly. And, um, and if, you, if you just pursue that, it, it, it helps. Um, 
yeah, it, it just helps. And yeah, it's, a, it's, a, I think it's super subjective because uh, at the end of the day, like I like just making comic books. Yeah, I have technology and I do all those different things, but uh, I just like making comic books. And sometimes I just want to just make some cool comics that like do cool stuff. And if I'm able to do that with the software or if I need to develop a skill to do that, um, then I'll just, I'll just spend the time to do it and, and go from there. But there isn't really a, uh, there isn't really like a, yeah, there isn't like a, a rule or regulation uh, to do it. And so like, I, I'm pretty like non-committal with the, with like, oh yeah, you need to learn this or you should learn this and learn this. Yes, learn something, learn the platforms that allow you to do the things that you need to do. Uh, it just so happens that Unity allows for me to do stuff because they, you know, make mobile devices easier to work with, but that's about it. And so, uh, so with this, I'm pretty much, I have a 3D model I made of my, uh, of myself, uh, because artists, you know, are very kind of narcissistic a little bit. And so I have, uh, different animations that I can use. And so I'm going to just drag in an animation right here. Boom. Uh, I'm going to rotate this because this looks kind of crazy. Boom, rotate it. Boom, uh, I'm going to lower it down like that. And then I have this AR camera. Uh, I think I need to add a license. Uh, and then I will log in. Boom, add this license key real quick. And then I will show the demo and then we will, we will be good. Uh, so boom, uh, hopefully nobody takes my license key. Um, it doesn't work, so it doesn't matter. Uh, and then uh, I'm going to add a, uh, a audio source, a audio track, boom. I will add some sounds because I love music like that. And then I will just play it real quick. And so now I'm going to turn off my uh, turn off my camera, so I can utilize this camera, and I will hopefully see if this works. We will see. I'm optimistic. I am optimistic. <laughs> that was a lot easier than I expected. <laughs> and so, uh, and so with that, it's just like, you know, something as simple as just like a five minute, five minute exploration of, of the tools and the technology allows you to, to do some interesting things. I already had an idea. I knew what to do with it. Right. Uh, and so somebody said, uh, what books or links would you recommend, um, to check out, to go deeper into ideas you've shared? Um, perfect example. Uh, let me, um, let me change or let me share the PowerPoint that I had and, uh, and do that. So, uh, so first, you know, you can check out my work. Uh, it, uh, my work is like focused on sort of exploring these topics and, and these intersections. Um, it's, it's really interesting to, uh, it's really interesting because I got into this because there wasn't a lot of like, stuff exploring those intersections right now like there's been a there's been a big interest in like social impact use cases uh where people do murals where people do um sort of installations and stuff like that um but that's all still emerging so there isn't a lot of like there aren't a lot of resources uh like exploring the intersections um the uh First and foremost, it's like if you if you want to learn how to use, uh, want to learn how to like build AR experiences, I would highly recommend um, uh, learning the Unity game engine. And so learning, uh, learning, uh, going to like you know learn.unity.com. They're like learning resources that they have available. Um, Googling uh, and looking up like different videos for. Um, for XR, like just how to build XR experiences. 
there's tons of uh, good YouTubers and things that 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 do those things. Um, I know that there are a lot of uh, books available for creating projects. Uh, I I would say just finding a uh, finding like a humble bundle. Uh, if you're familiar with humble bundle, like finding a humble bundle for uh, for like either like Unity development, game development, uh, and all those things is uh, is good. You don't have to buy a whole. You don't have to like look at a whole bunch of those resources because I feel like they all do sort of pretty much the same thing. But um, you know, as much as it pains me, I I I don't think that there is a lot of there is a lot of unique resources available. Um, and as I sort of like create courses and, 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 and continue to do the work that I do, uh, I, uh, it becomes ever apparent that the, 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 the resources that I use to learn like all this stuff is, are still the only resources that are available. And that was essentially just you know, I'll look up a, you know, I'll have a, a, a course on Udemy, or I'll look up some, some, some tutorials on, on YouTube, or I'll use like a project book from like PACT or, uh, or like LinkedIn Learning. And, um, and that's it, you know, like there, there isn't like anything new outside of like, oh, we've updated the Unity editor. So here's the most recent version of the same project that I've you know, that I learned three years ago. Um, and so it's, I think it's as we sort of progress and as people learn to explore uh, this a little bit more, you'll start to find more stuff. But uh, but for now, it's like, if you want to learn how to make an AR comic, my projects are probably the only ones that like, you'll see teaching you how to do that. Uh, I had, you know, inspiration and stuff like that from people that have created, but people don't necessarily, people in the space aren't necessarily like making resources available or teaching and stuff like in that, uh, in that. And so I, I found that, you know, me sort of exploring that space and just saying, oh yeah, what if you created this thing and then recorded it and put it and made it a course, those things end up filling that void. Um, I wish that wasn't the case because I actually want to learn some cool stuff from other people, but uh, people just, you know, they don't just make a demo and then you just try to figure out how it was made. Uh, and so I would say learn animation, learn unity, uh, you know, learn how to like code if you want, you don't really need to, but it definitely makes things easier. Um, and then, uh, then just try to challenge yourself like that. That's really it. Like challenge yourself in the ways that, that you feel, um, uh, would just be cool and, and like, yeah, would just be cool to sort of just know how to do it. Um. And I say that because I'm like, I've been a developer and stuff and I have like basic software languages, uh, language experience, but I'm not like the best like C sharp person. And so uh, I'm like still trying to learn C sharp so that I can do like all the things that I like enjoy doing. And, uh, and that it, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, can XR be utilized in, in, in control environment for profit yeah i'll, yeah. I'll expand on that just imagine the just like a haunted kind of house kind of thing well actually imagine just a house but you set up on the environment you program you use the animations to uh, to in work with the environment to move around the hallways in the exact same kind of framework and then you get some XR technology for the viewers to see them. So an empty house could be utilized as a haunted, uh, a haunted mansion kind of an experience. Can XR be profitable in an enclosed environment? If you have a good business model, <laughs> uh -huh. essentially like it, like what you're talking about. And, and this is something that I've grown more appreciation with is the use cases for XR are heavily dependent on uh, how well you can develop products. If you can develop products, you can, you can make a business out of selling XR to businesses and consumers. Uh, and you can scale it in ways that allow for you to take advantage of the opportunities and the interest of the public. The limiting factor is if you just think that you could just put XR onto something and it'll sell, that is a, that's a, you know, that's just a fallacy. And so for me, I, 
uh, I have consumer ready XR products, but that's just because I'm a bookmaker. I make books and they're, in, and they're AR enabled. And so you provide people with a, a easy workflow to where they could get off of work after, uh, after a, a double shift and they can relax by just engaging in your experience and they don't have to learn anything. That is good product. That's good product design. That is key, yes. And so, um, which is what the industry is trying to figure out. It's like, how do you make money off of it? Well, just make a product. Make a product that makes sense, that's easy to use outside, out of the box, does not require any real setup outside of, oh, download this, click this, then, uh, and, then, and then scale that. Do enough product testing, build out a workflow that makes sense. Uh, put a price tag on it that isn't uh, isn't too prohibitive, um, and and then continue to add content to it, you know. And so, uh, and so those are the those are the things that I like am currently exploring. Uh, but those are the things that that work, right? Because it's like, you know, I, I always go back to this uh, reference of uh, you know the reason why the purpose of uh, Saturday morning cartoons. So, uh, cartoons in and of themselves did not make money, but they were the youth. They were the marketing for the. Uh, they were marketing for selling the toys, and so the the power of the cartoon was uh, was shown in the product sales of all the mm -hmm. toys about those cartoons. And so you know, XR is the cartoon. the The product that you're selling is the is the toy, and so uh, and so I, you know, and there's. I'm not like a product designer. I, I'm a product designer, but like by default, and that's not my expertise. But um, but that's those are the things that have sort of anchored me to like, okay, what is the potential, you know, uh, business solutions that are that are available? Um, obviously, it's going to be consumer to consumer because the more customers you have, the the more successful you are. Um, and then it's a matter of okay, what is that product that that your consumers are going to have? And uh, right. just kind of go from your next one call you need, you need to make Christian is um, build a bear to you know a bear with an afro. <laughs> oh yeah, <laughs> next game plan. Like an augmented build a bear, man. That 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 that's the next best thing right there. Oh right? well, your I meant your comic book cartoons. Well, the product is selling is a toy. Build a bear is a toy. There oh, you go. Yeah. Oh yeah, it, it's a it is true. It is true. And so uh, and so I I I I'm, I'm curious to see what the landscape looks like when I get out of medical school, because at this point I'm just I just make this stuff and, and create things to just keep right. myself sane. Um, I'm hoping that it's going to be a big change too. I'm hoping it doesn't get into like a kind of a stop frame bubble that um, really holograms got into, like yeah. only for two minutes that everybody thought Tupac on oh, Tupac was alive. Oh yeah, that was great. But then they didn't make a they didn't make a figurine. And yeah, so it just sort of died in the dust, and uh, yeah. it's a, it just exists as a as a YouTube video. So. Um, yeah but yeah yeah it's a uh, yeah and so uh you know that that that's my pre presentation for everybody um uh i am always down to chat and, and chill and uh uh so i mentioned uh, nfts i i love nfts they uh they created a um they created a new market for uh independent creators to sell their files and so uh it's uh whether it's for everybody i don't know but uh but it, there's definitely some potential and I'm definitely exploring this place as well. Um, but uh, um, yeah, blah, blah, blah. But yeah, yeah, you know, definitely appreciate all the questions and everything. And uh, I know it's past 12, so I don't want to like hold anybody up. But uh, yeah, if anybody else has any questions and or want to chat or whatever, uh, you know, definitely uh, love the conversations. And uh, hopefully, you guys, you enjoyed stuff and uh, and definitely appreciate the, uh, the opportunity to, to share what I do and, and some of the stuff I've been working on. Yeah, thank you, Stephen, um, for this amazing uh, presentation, because um, I believe that, you know, people can learn a lot of different stuff. Oh, yeah, I'm so far away from microphone. Uh, <laughs> I was so enjoyed the presentation, so I put push away my microphone anyway. So yeah, so, so it's amazing to see, you see, you are good in art development and also medical. Those three are, you know, very hard to, to learn, to master. And you can master three of them. And I really like to see, you know, you enjoy doing it. 
and you just say, let's jump it, right? And I really like the doing, you know, just just do it. And the way you learn things, it's like, oh, let's just just learn how to do it, right? Like Udemy and Unity. And I think, you know, um, before I read a book, it seems like a long time ago, our parents, I am millennials as well. So our parents, the way they learn things is that they are uh, like T types of people, right? So one, strengths, specialties. And they uh, work for a company for 40 years and retire. But for our generation, it's almost impossible, right? Because yeah. technology is sweet, ch- changing, right? And I really think that, yeah, if you can be hireable, right? Get mm-hmm. one skill, be hireable and start branching out that one skills, for example, animation, um, yeah, although you start from your graphic comics, right? Because I know your mission is definitely like be, you know, express yourself through all your art, right? And become 3D artist, right? And become, you know, animator, 3D artist and start branching out to development and then start branching out. Yeah, even medical. I think that, yeah. <laughs> that is a huge jump, but I, I can tell you see start from your body movement and you are interested. I, I don't know how, how you jump to that, but it's very interesting. To, it's, to, it's to definitely, see. A, it was definitely a, a journey. But, yeah, uh, yeah, very interesting. Yeah, and, and I, I'm enjoying you like uh, share with people because I remember my first time learning um, XR. I create my YouTube channel and I start teaching people do Spark AR early times back in 2019. I remember like I, I start, I recorded it on January 1st and I ran a dedicated desk in WeWork in Santa Monica. And then, you know, during that time, the entire building was dark Mm -hmm. and the last woman with a dog and she was about to leave the the office and she she looked at me and I was about to record my Spark AR session. And she was like, do you have family? Don't you need to celebrate new year? And I was like, I mean, I'm I'm celebrating doing this. I cannot wait to show like how to create you know a little uh little game and in spark ar and she was like okay you know after i finish it i published i think i got like a 25 or 24k views Mm. i i think the best my strategy is that uh publish during holidays nobody is creating any content everyone just want to consume so you can get a lot of views yeah and i i I really think that the the best way to to, to learn is to teach. Yeah. So the way that I learned Unity is that before I had a full-time job, right? Monday to Friday. And Saturday, I, I just specific push that entire day. Four hours in the morning, I learn and I eat lunch for one hour. And the rest of four hours, um, afternoon, I just record it, what I learned. Hmm. So I feel like all the knowledge is imprinted. I couldn't oh, yeah. forget. You can't, you can't yeah. forget it at that point. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, I, I find out a lot of benefit and, you know, a lot of people look at my video and it's just recording my process, mm-hmm. right? And I can be better and better and just by looking at a lot of comments and I just create better stuff. And now, I mean, I, I'm hosting events and every week I learn a lot of things from other people. So I really enjoy your session because you, you see like, you are a doer and you are so knowledgeable and you are creating a lot of different stuff um, and uh, kind of help um, or uh, speak up for the black community that I think this is a really good um, speaking event. Yeah, thank you so much for showing up. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. I mean, thanks for having me. I think yeah. it's, uh, I always enjoy um, being able to just sort of share just the things that you just sort of just wake up one day and be like, huh, I just wanna try this out. Oh, it's turned out pretty good. Let me just tell some people. Yeah, and so yeah. It's, uh, it's been really great. Cool. Thank you so much. And I will follow up with you um, for uh, the event. And uh, yeah, let's keep in touch. And I also do some education stuff. So yeah, definitely that's in t- uh, keep in touch. And I will follow up with you and oh, with yeah. the event folder. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, thank sure. you so much. Yeah. Then thank you everyone for joining us today. And uh, Hopefully see you guys all like pretty soon. Yeah, I think next week we are still confirming another event, but yeah, then hopefully see you guys soon. Mm, Okay, bye-bye.